Tropical peat swamp forests are similar to other tropical forests, except that the ground is flooded. That slows down the decomposition of leaves, roots, and branches, which then build up to form peat. This very organic rich peat soil stores huge amounts of carbon, even more than the trees above. At the moment, these peatlands are under a huge amount of pressure. They're being drained and deforested for agriculture and oil palm plantations. And as soon as the water table is lowered, all the carbon that's been stored up over thousands of years can begin to decompose, releasing huge amounts of CO2 to the atmosphere. We're studying what these peatlands are like in their natural state and what happens when they're drained and deforested to make way for plantations. The drainage of tropical peatlands has implications at many different scales. First, drainage has huge climate implications. When peatlands are drained, all the carbon which accumulated as peat over thousands of years can be released to the atmosphere as CO2. But it also has more localized impacts. For example, the drained peat is a great fuel for fire. Once a fire starts, it can burn on this very organic rich soil for weeks or even months, and that causes terrible haze in the regions. Subsidence is another major problem. As the peat decomposes or is burned away, the land surface sinks down. These peatlands are in low-lying coastal areas, so a lot of this land will be at or below sea level in the coming decades. I'm specifically working at a field site on the island of Borneo. This summer, my field work focused on methane, which is a very important greenhouse gas and much more potent than CO2. Methane is released from natural wetlands, and so we were looking to see in tropical peatlands how much methane is released and what is the source of the methane, and in particular, how does it compare to the methane that's being released from northern wetlands. I've really enjoyed this project because it's allowed me to use both hydrology and geochemistry. The skills I've learned are also applicable to a range of other projects. For example, I recently started working on a project in Siberia where we're studying the thawing permafrost and the methane that's released from it, and how that contributes to climate change. In the future, I hope to continue working on related research questions.